Day three of the legend stage of the Paris Blast Major has come to its conclusion. It's been a bit of a roller coaster, I think it's safe to say, with a lot of head scratching moments and some results that you may have to have a double takeover. But as ever, I'm joined by Frog and Dualism to delve deep into the positives and negatives of today's proceedings. As Dualism started yesterday, Frog will jump to you. What was your positive from today? Well, Vince, I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but I'm once again going to bring up Monty today as a positive, uh, as opposed to yesterday, because they too owed Na'Vi. And man, when I saw that that draw, I, I was really excited because the storylines of Na'Vi versus Monty, right? The Ukrainian showdown, essentially. Uh, SDY versus his former team, uh, the whole War 2K simple drama that happened on Twitter late last year after King Wins Legends. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of storylines that you could draw to this game and i i mean i'll be honest i thought the series would be a lot closer but monty showed up uh in in the way that i hoped that they would uh, would have against uh vitality yesterday everyone was there it was you know boros played very well again but it wasn't just War boros war 2k showed up sdy had you know an incredible series by by all means and uh krasnel as well demqq with some really like crucial moments uh, honestly i'm i'm super happy now am i a little upset they went 3-1 rather than 3-0 and you know as such screwed up my pickums a little bit but uh, hey i mean i'm just happy to see them go through the playoffs because i mean this team is is really really good as as they've shown and i think they're going to be like a serious wild card coming into things uh as as they kind of just <laughs> might fuck up some more pickums if i'm if i'm honest because i don't think a lot of people still know what to think about them yet <laughs> yeah it's very true and I, I mean if anyone's pickums is still alive i think there's gonna be very few people that fall into that bracket um yeah monty uh, it's also especially strange because i felt like in a challenger stage they kind of blew hot or cold and i i really didn't have any expectations of them in the legend stage but how, how much do you think today's performance was maybe fueled from some die young you did touch on him before just being like phenomenal today do you think there is an element of revenge because of how long he was kind of, I don't know if scapegoated is maybe too strong of a word or too harsh of a word, but it felt like in Na'Vi's issues, a lot of them were directed at Sun Dai Young. It must be such a sweet feeling for him now to get that revenge. Oh, for sure. I mean, I think Sun Dai Young, you, you do have to give him a huge amount of credit. Um, I, I also do want to say, like, Na'Vi, what the fuck was this veto? Because you let Anubis through, which we touched on yesterday. Monty are just the kings of tier two on Anubis, right? It's their home ground. So you were able to, you know, they're able to just play their best map essentially against Navi, who are not especially good on it. And then you picked Nuke, which means they can start on the CT side and they just got the ball rolling. I mean, it was a super dominant half. I think it was 13 to two for Monty on their CT half. Uh, and then they just picked up the pistol and closed it out, right? So, so. Honestly, Navi didn't really feel like they were in that game, and SDY was a huge part of that, obviously being the, the sort of interim IGL currently for them, uh, having an absolutely insane map on Anubis, going like 27 and 14 or something like that, 100 plus ADR, um, you know, and, and for what it's worth, Nuke, it's not that long ago that he was on Navi, so he probably does have a really good understanding for how they approach that map, and it kind of makes his calling a lot easier on the CT side, knowing, oh, well, they throw these outside smokes, this is probably what's happening, uh, let's re-aggress lobby, you know, and so it's, it's yeah, I mean, I think SDY definitely uh, should receive a lot of praise, and uh, it's nice to see him back in this form, because it's been a long time since we kind of saw SDY as a star player, right, we kind of have to go back to the team spirit days, back when they uh, still had that old draft dragon logo that is a long long time ago but i do definitely remember it now speaking of praise dualism who is your positive from today my positive is nip and it's similar to my reasons for uh fanatic yesterday in that i think it's very nice storyline wise to have teams like nip and fanatic doing well in this last major and, you know, they have a good chance of going through and they showed today that they were looking a little bit better than I th I'd say that they looked in challenger stage as well. Yeah, I think the NIP also really shocked me in terms of uh, the fact that they, they beat Ents, not just beat Ents, but looked really, really comfortable in doing so. And I think I discussed this on the first day of recording the recaps that I was a bit concerned about Nip because I, I thought Head Trick was a little bit inconsistent. Brolan really hasn't shown 
the kind of levels that I think a lot of people expected from him. At one point, he was touted as like the next big thing from Sweden. And I'm not sure that we're in a position where we can say he's really lived up to that mantle. So the fact that they just destroyed Ents, and I, I probably will get back to them in a, a little bit later on, for me was very, very surprising. But Jules, apart from that, now that they're up against Apex next, like that, that for me is a very close game and hard to call. For sure. I think Apex are one of those teams that I think have very much flown under people's radars, despite having a lot of names that people are very familiar with. Um, but coming into today for Apex, Jacob was the third best performer of the Legend stage. He's, he's fallen off a bit now, f considering their result today, but they've been looking very good as well. And I think um, for NIP, it's a bit more of a... I think there's probably a bit more pressure. There's a lot more legacy. There's a lot more history. People like Config are definitely looking for redemption. Uh, Alexi B wants to show that he is a he is a leader that is worth the praise that was heaped on him after the Ents' run at Katowice a few years back. Um, my only worry for NIP is that they were they were doing well when they were on Ancient um, against Ents today, but you could tell the moment that the atmosphere changed on the team. There, were, when when Ents started mounting a bit of a comeback. They went from fist bumping each other when they lost rounds to very clear moments of tilt. Like Brolin was throwing himself back in his chair. Like Config was just like rubbing his face, getting frustrated, trying not to then uh, express it too much to the team. And I think that if they can't keep emotions in check, that that's when the pressure could really bear down on them, I think. Mm, and it could be a determining factor is, is to potentially losing uh, against Apex as well. Keeping a cool will definitely go a long way. And, you know, we just discussed before about how revenge and facing off against previous teams. Well, Alexi obviously playing against Ents, maybe getting a bit of revenge as well. As you mentioned before, they've had some success in the past and then things kind of went sideways. Uh, Frog, just to bring you in on the, the whole nip aspect of things, have you been uh, particularly surprised or shocked or um, impressed with their performance so far at the, the Major, or is this kind of what you expected from them? I mean, coming into the Major initially, I really had low expectations just because outside of the Major, the few events prior to this, uh, they looked bad, right? There's, there's no... Uh, sugarcoating it they were playing face it uh, like level uh, cs right they're just kind of a random stack they didn't really have set strategies and you know you could excuse that for the first one or two events but for quite a while it felt like that was still the level they were at there wasn't a lot of coordination and i understand you know a lot of changing pieces over the last few months for this team config coming in um it certainly looked a lot better now. It does feel like they're playing Team CS again. Uh, and considering the names they have on this roster, that's a good sign. It's a good thing. Uh, so potentially, I mean, Apex are a solid team, but I could see them do well. And as kind of time progresses, I could also see them doing quite well in playoffs. Um, I guess, yeah, Tilt, definitely something to be wary of. And especially when you have a player like Hedrick, like he's still very much a a young raw player he doesn't have tons of experience and to have veteran players around him kind of tilts i don't think that's a really good environment for him to perform because you know as good as he is he still isn't like a, a zywu or even monzi level star yet um so i don't know it's t nipper a weird team they've certainly exceeded my expectations coming into the event but i still don't think they're you know major winning uh form yet I think that's fair, and also to piggyback off what you said, I, yeah, I think Hedrick's like 18 years old, if I'm not mistaken. He's he's a yep. very, very young guy, so completely agree with you on that point. My positive is actually not going to be a team, it's going to be an individual player, and I'm going to say Rops, um, for a few different reasons. A special shout out to Devil Walk's incredible mustache as well. Uh, that was absolutely <laughs> incredible, and, and BNE nearly pulled out the shock uh, against FaZe, and of course Rops was a big reason why they didn't. He had an unbelievable performance today against Bad News Eagles. Like, overpass was a blowout. Let's just forget about that one. They're 0-1 down on Mirage. They're 14-9 in the lead, and then they start to choke hard. And they needed a hero, and Rops was the man. He got a 1.4 rating on Mirage, a 30 bomb, just shy of 100 ADR. And without him and that performance he put in, I honestly think that Bad News Eagles would have 2 0 would FaZe. They'd have knocked them out. And as soon as they ended up winning that, Inferno was a pretty straightforward game. Again, Rops dropped well over 20, 25 kills. He was a monster today. And I just kind of want to give him a little bit of props as well, because he's one of those players, you know, it's, it's 
been seemingly forever since phase one antwerp and had that success and everyone was kind of getting on the hype train since then it's been trials and tribulations it's been turbulence and i saw a lot of people pointing the finger at rops and saying like why is he not the player that we expected why is he not posting up the big numbers why is he having some quiet games so at a huge moment where FaZe desperately needed someone to stand tall, he was that man. And I definitely want to give him his, his well-deserved praise as a result. So as a side point, we'll start with you first here, Dualism. Um, your overall feelings on FaZe, are they still a contender in your opinion to win this major? Like obviously they're still two and two. They play Na'Vi tomorrow. Do you think that they can still do this or are they looking too far out of shape? I think that it's always possible. I think with the people that you have on FaZe's lineup, I think it would be unrealistic to ever count them out. I think even when they you know, were struggling in Rio, when they were in their 0-2 match there, I don't think people expected them to go 0-3, even when they were not looking good. And I think here is the same, even though they're 2-2. I think most people will say that FaZe will always have a chance based on based on the quality of the players that they have. And you know, to, to go back to Rops, I think that Rops is one of those players that perhaps has been a little bit slept on despite how well he does perform. But he, he is, he is, in my opinion, one of those kind of ideal players, right? In terms of his attitude is good. He doesn't really get into much drama. He is intelligent and that cares about the game on a level that I don't think most players do. And he has the talent on top. And I think that that is something that is very rare especially for young players um and he you know i think that he is also in a team where he is allowed to flourish and he clearly is in a good spot at the moment um but again i guess as i've said in previous on previous days it is a matter of the team effort has to be there i do think that I don't think that phase can be complacent and say oh good rops is here he'll just carry and he'll do well i do think the whole team does need to be on that next level for them to realistically make it to playoffs and be once again considered one of the favorites. Mm. And you you bring brought up a very interesting point at the end about like team effort and everyone pulling their weight, and that kind of beautifully brings me on to what I was going to ask you here, Frog. From your perspective, obviously being a coach, Faze seemed to have an issue with closing out games. I mean, we saw this twice actually against Bad News Eagles today. They were 14-9 up and went into OT. They should have just won on Mirage. And then even on Inferno, they had like a 13-3 lead or something. And Bad News Eagles actually started to make a comeback. They made it really sweaty. They made it really, really close. Um, so from your perspective, like, how do Faze bridge that gap? How how can they possibly fix this? Because this isn't the first time it's happened. Even Rops in his post game interview was saying like we're really bad at closing out games. Like we we seem to have this mental block or some real issues. So have you noticed it yourself? And if so, what do you think they can do to change that? Well, I mean, from from first hand experience, uh, having games that are really difficult to close out, um, I think. And I, I don't know if this is the case for FaZe necessarily, but I think what happens sometimes is that you kind of outplay yourself, right? If you have something that is winning, uh, right, a, a winning formula, so to speak, your defaults are working out uh, and you start playing a certain way and it's winning you rounds, eventually you anticipate your opponent to adapt to what you're doing. And uh, with some teams, perhaps where the, the stylistic approach to Counter-Strike is a little bit difficult, um, I think that can kind of play against you because you expect them to adapt to what you're doing. So you try something new this round and then that doesn't work. And then, OK, you're like, OK, maybe we go back to what we just did, but our, our economy is not as good anymore. Or you try a different thing, again, a completely new approach. And maybe you stray away from what's been working because you just, yeah, you just outthink yourself. You, you're overthinking absolutely everything. And if you just kind of kept it simple, listen, guys, let's just default. OK, we get our map control. Let's see. Oh, we can get an opening pick here. Cool. We get that player's information. Uh, yep. Uh, maybe he gets the site. Oh, he dies. There's three there. Cool. We group back and hit the other site and then we trade numbers, right? It's a 4-2. CS is a very simple game at the end of the day. And I think people can lose sight of that um, amongst, you know, very complicated strats and executes and defaults of, oh, we need this utility here and there and the timings for these rotations and yada, yada, yada. A lot of the time, it's just about keeping it simple and just closing out games, efficient communication when you're executing and you just get the trades your way and then you get solid post plant and that's it, right? Um, so I don't know. 
it's I, I can't say for sure what's happening with phase but i think there certainly is an element of them lacking in the the fundamental sometimes Okay, so maybe simplicity is key uh, when it comes yeah. to phase, and we'll see if tomorrow, if Navi uh, will walk into that problem or not. So let's move to our negatives now. We will start with you, Dualism. Uh, who is your negative or your downside of today's games? My downside is Bad News Eagles. Um, I think that they had that they had a mental edge today over phase. They have managed to make phase their bitches so often in a major setting but you know yeah rops going nuclear aside i think that the fact that they lost so narrowly when i think psychologically phase were definitely on the on the back ropes for it is a is a real shame and you know i, I won't dwell on the whole uh, hot mic incident but i do think perhaps there was say tension on the team or some potential kind of unsettledness to them that kind of could have been uh, the difference between them winning and losing today yeah and i think it's something that that you've both kind of touched on today as well what i really noticed with bad news eagles watching that game uh very closely is when they were winning they were super hype they were high-fiving they were they were looking like full of vigor full of just adrenaline the second phase started to clap them back it was like a graveyard like the players head in hands back of chair like the the body language went from from 100 to zero real quick and then back again and maybe that does play into what you just said before dualism do you, do you think that bad news eagles are a team that can actually build a head of steam after this major and, and really start to challenge in some other tier one tournaments because it feels like they show up for the majors and they kind of disappear for a while afterwards I think that there's like a big contrast between like a, a Bad News Eagles and say a Monty where even on the off day between the Challengers and Legend stage, they were grinding an online tournament. I'm sure Frog probably knows which tournament. Um, it was, it's our Challenger League. There we go. Um, well, yeah, as you say, like Bad News Eagles just don't really seem present. And there's a joke that I want to make that I'm sure Frog knows what I want to say about their lack of activity. But um, yeah, I think it is just a bit of a... It's a. I don't think you can realistically, consistently be a top, t top team or a top cha like a, a team that can challenge the top teams if you aren't constantly at least playing qualifiers and making deep runs and at least being a bit more present towards the top level of competition. And that is definitely something that, yeah, bad news eagles then get underestimated every major because people forget they exist. Hmm. Oh, that's that's a very good point, honestly. Yeah, it, it seems like they show up at a major, they disappear, everyone kind of forgets about them, and then, oh yeah, they're, they're still the same team, they're still trying their best to, to make things work. Frog, from your perspective, looking at Bad News Eagles, if you were, say, in Bravado, you're going to play up against these guys at some stage and you're scouting them, what do you think is Bad News Eagles' most kind of um, strongest suit? Like, wh where does their strength lie as this team? Why, why are they getting some performances? Why are they doing some decent work when it comes to majors? Um, for me, it's two things. Uh, one of them is momentum, because uh, as you touched on, emotions is a very, very big thing for for this team, um, right? Like, I think these these Kosovo guys are kind of like the Brazilians of Europe in a sense, where they're really high, screaming, they're loud, they're piping each other out, going, bah, 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 you know, and and that's great. But when that doesn't work for you it's you know when when you are able to kill that momentum essentially that's when a team like that really really struggles to get their heads in the game and, and get back into it essentially and the other area is aggression um you know they're a team that make a lot of individual plays that you don't necessarily expect kind of yolo low percentage plays sometimes right it's like a and it's not like it's a, a once in a lifetime play like a simple falling out of heaven kind of thing right but you know even 40 60 uh odds and and normally in team cs at a high level you're not expecting people to go for the the less likely play so to speak so they'll push through a smoke and they get two because no one's expecting you to go through a smoke because why would you or you know things like that so i think it's it's about um just 
really playing simple CS against these guys, just having good communication, waiting for their aggression, punishing them, and then that just kills their momentum. If you're able to keep your guns up on anti-ecos and keep your money strong, they're never going to have the utility or the strong buys to really get you out of it. And and I think that if you do seed that like uh, momentum that you're building up to these guys, then they're going to roll you. And I think that's what they did to FaZe today, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Up until again, that momentum stopped, and then suddenly it was like, "Oh crap! What's what's Plan B?" Devil Walk gave some impassioned speeches. It was good to see from the coaching role as well. Obviously, very intelligent guy. He's been around the scene for a super, super long time. Um, so I'm I'm hoping that, that him and the team are going to be able to push forward together and make something happen. Uh, that leads us into your negative frog of today. Well, we've been touching on him, but for me, it's phase. I, I hate to say it. Um, this was not a good looking phase at all today because they didn't play the simple counter strike that, you know, we all understand. But but at the end of the day, keeping it simple sometimes is what's best. And I think it was just really disappointing. You touched on him. Rops was the only reason. Well, maybe Brokey and, and sometimes, but it was mainly just Rops today. And and as dualism keeps saying you can't have one team or one player per team kind of just carrying you through anymore you know long gone are the days of simple dropping is 1.56 rating while everyone's sub one and and yet they win series right that just won't happen especially not against the caliber of teams that we're seeing currently and so i i'm i'm not i'm just not quite sure you know it, it was really difficult to see a, a team that i feel like is is so good at the end of the day right like these players are so good it's such a well-balanced system and yet they were just making really poor mistakes rops was the only one keeping them in it and i mean once inferno started uh and i saw that t side i was like cool phaser back in it you know we're back it's that whole meme of of <laughs> that, that we keep seeing on twitter with pickums and i'm like cool phase have got this in the bag and then i start seeing their ct side and Rops is no longer able to get involved at all, and even he was making honestly poor decision making, in my opinion, just because of the fact that, like, okay, you know that suddenly Bad News Eagles are doing um, an A wrap, right, where they take long control and start wrapping around. Uh, Rops is just on balcony, and instead of you know looking to uh, push into apps, he just decides to drop pit, make a huge sound cue, and then you know bad news eagles have a player in apps potentially or people coming up short and they know exactly where he is like i understand his logic sometimes but but then i also feel like there were very much opportunities that none of the players on phase were taking on that ct side and and that's just like really difficult to look at when you feel like this is a team that normally is is so much more switched on um so you know you touched on it before can they still win this major i think so uh, because we've seen so many different versions of phase so far in this event, but it really just depends what version we're getting on the day right now. And uh, I don't know, they need to find some sort of consistency in their footing because, because this is just terrifying to watch. Well, that, that kind of leads us on nicely to, to my negative as well, because you talked about consistency, you talked about which side is going to show up. My negative is Ents. And uh, honestly, I don't know what the hell's happened to them in this legend stage. Uh, pretty much flawless in the challenger stage and now they've dropped off a cliff and they got some legit wins in the challenger stage as well fair enough they lost the vitality on their approach like no one's gonna hold that against them they beat bad news eagles but then they lose it into the breach and then they get absolutely slapped by nip only winning 17 rounds in two maps and interestingly enough the, the most consistent player whenever i seem to watch him is diha and he had a bit of a shocker today. Nurts played pretty well. Sun Pius was hot or cold. Some of the, the decision-making was very questionable from Entz. And I'm just sat here, like, scratching my head watching this team, like, wondering what the hell happened in between these two stages. Like, th I, I don't have anything negative to say about NIP. You know, fair enough, you, you got the W. But Entz coming out of that challenger stage, like... They were one of the teams that I felt most confident would make it through. I didn't think they'd 3-0, and but I thought they'd be like a 3-1, and maybe a scrappy 3-2 and if they didn't perform. And yet here we are, 1-3. and They had a minus 20 round difference as well because of how absolutely wrecked they've got in some of their games uh, since beating Bad News Eagles in the first one. And I just don't know where they go from here. So I'll start with you, uh, Dualism. Is this a good enough performance over the overall major for Ents to justify 
maybe keeping this roster, do you think they need roster changes? Is it too harsh to make a change as a result of this performance? I think it's hard to say without knowing, as you say, what has happened between these two stages. If it is just a matter of them kind of getting off on the wrong foot in their first like few games and thus like the the atmosphere went down, then that's very different to if they just aren't able to counter their opponents particularly efficiently. Um, I think it, it's, it's, it is very strange. I think it's, I, I if, when I look at the pickums that I'm, that I'm tracking, everybody except one person put Ents to go through. A few people had them as a 3-0 for this stage as well. Um, and so it, it is, it is definitely worrying because on paper, these pieces should be working and they have worked. So I'd say it's for me it's very hard to really make any call. Yeah, I think it's the inconsistency that's the biggest problem for me and it depends on really what Ents is looking to do. Do they want to be like this top 10 team that has a potential and is like a dark horse in every tournament or do they want to be like a legit contender? Because right now they look like a legit contender in the challenger stage and then that's completely, you know, gone out the window. They've just dropped off the edge of a cliff. When it comes to the legend stage, uh, Frog, what's your take on Ents and their performances in, in this stage of the major? Well, I think Ents is a weird one because we've seen them around for quite a while now. But when you compare a roster like Ents and a roster like FaZe, we can all acknowledge how really good a player like um like Diha is right but he's still a relatively new face and i guess you don't same you don't have the same kind of pedigree than that other names like Rops and and uh you know Rain or even people on Nip now like Config and Brolan right um so i don't know it's it's a roster that has definitely always felt like has really incredible players right a lot of people that came up from tier 2 and are kind of the new face of tier 1 counter strike and I can't really identify a player or anything that, that needs to be changed that's so massively underperforming that it's just not working out. But but at the same time, like I guess we really did see a lot of individuals kind of fail to perform in, in this legend stage. But I guess it also wasn't just like one individual not showing up. It was kind of just you're either all there or you're not, which to me kind of leads to perhaps a, a coaching or IGL change is necessary. But again, you know, is that too extreme considering how well they were playing before? I mean, everybody was suddenly hyping up Snappy again and rightfully so. Rightfully so. I think he's a, a really good IGL. It's just a really hard and tough spot to be on. And honestly, like, I'm not too sure. Like, I think Nerds is phenomenal. They just got him. Obviously, you'd want to keep him, but not sure for anyone else. Um, but I think, I don't know, I think Dualism maybe has something to add about this. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that when you bring up IGLs and leadership, I think a lot of people are looking at Nico and talking about, oh, wow, he's never won a major in CSGO, and that's crazy. But Snappy's been around for a very, very long time, and I feel like he is the one of, like, just the forgotten Danish IGL in that sense, where it's like, you have people like Carrigan, you had people like Hunden before, well, you know, all of that, but Snappy's been grinding for a long time, and he's been, you know, he's he's done, he's been doing stuff at a lower level of Danish CS, he then went, he's gone international, he's been present, but I think he's kind of had a raw end of the deal for a lot of his time in Go as well. Yeah, I think, as you say, he's kind of been forgotten up until recently, maybe this last year or so. And it reminds me of a tweet, actually, that he made where he basically likened himself, or it wasn't a tweet, it was a comment somewhere. Uh, he said he was one of the best IGLs in the world, and a lot of people went after him. You know, they're like, no, it's Carrigan, no, it's X, no, it's Y, no, it's Z. And I, I actually replied to him and I said, like, listen, you have to have a competitiveness, you have to have a self-belief to play at any kind of high level when it comes to competitive sports or esports or anything else. You have to believe in yourself, especially as an IGL. So unfortunately, what ended up happening after that, because that was in between the two stages, is they have now just been banged out. So <laughs> that tweet is aged incredibly poorly. But the, the idea is there, and I, I hope that that confidence doesn't leave them. I hope that they can get consistency. I agree completely with you as well, Frog, that it's it's not an obvious like standout player like this guy must be replaced like he is playing terribly i would say if we're going off today's performance madden was almost completely absent like he had a really really poor 
um, series in particular. But maybe we can get back into uh, some of these conversations tomorrow. Uh, before we do head off, though, do, do either of you have any final remarks or statements you'd like to be made public before we call it a day? I think it's kind of interesting that if a challenger stage, all the international teams, everybody was like, oh, wow, this is the dawn of the international era. Wow, we love it. We love international teams. But in the end, the 3-0 teams have been the uh, the, the single nationality teams um, for a lot of it, well, for heroic. And then the international teams like G2 and Ents have kind of crashed and burned. I think it's just kind of quite funny. <laughs> Just the complete opposite of maybe what people expected, and obviously Vitality on French soil, uh, they have just rolled themselves into the champion stage, and I think, especially considering some of the casualties that we've had, it has definitely raised their stock alongside Heroic as very possible major winners. However, thank you guys very much again for joining me. We'll be back on again tomorrow for the next day of the Legend stage. Until then, peace.